Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Tuesday, July the 2th. That's July the 2nd, 2024. It is 6.05 a.m., just two days till July the 4th. I hope you're planning a great week and a great time together as we celebrate our nation's independence. And uh, this morning we're in Romans chapter 12, verse 19. <clears throat> and the title is Vengeance. Kind of a scary word, isn't it? Vengeance. So your weather for today, and I know everybody's a little more conscious of weather right now than they usually are. 78 degrees on the way to... Wait for it, 95 degrees, 15% chance of rain this afternoon. Uh, light northerly winds uh, becoming light southerly winds, not really a good sign for the high pressure system over us. And uh, I, I won't make any commentary other than keep your head on a swivel looking at the Gulf of Mexico right now. So just be advised. And with that being said, I do need to tell you, I want to take a little break. Uh, enjoy the 4th of July with my family. We have a uh, big family coming into town. We're going to have a big time celebrating and seeing one another and spending time together. And I'll see you back here on Monday, July the 8th. <clears throat> How's that for a deal? So what is vengeance? Dictionary definition is punishment inflicted or retribution exacted for an injury or wrong. So that's what vengeance is. What is revenge? Because both words are used in the passage we're looking at this morning. Revenge is the act of inflicting hurt or harm on someone for an injury or wrong suffered at their hands. Seems to me, just me as a human being, seems to me that vengeance and revenge are two sides of the same coin, and the coin is called get even. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever taken revenge on someone else? How'd that turn out? Usually it doesn't turn out well, and you feel terrible about it. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you feel terrible about it after you do it. Have you ever thought about what God's Word says about revenge and vengeance? It might set you free from bitterness and from lots of other problems. Listen to verse 19. It says, Never take your own revenge, beloved, <clears throat> but leave room for the wrath of God. Notice those two words. If you're looking at your copy of the scripture this morning, notice how those two words of God are written. We're going to talk about it more in just a minute. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. All have sinned come short of the glory of God. I think we'd be quick to agree about that. And every time someone sins, there's hurt. And when there's hurt, there's reaction. Mental reaction spiritual reaction, emotional reaction, and sometimes physical reaction. And our reactions are usually vengeful in nature. But we are not at liberty to pursue the gratification of our emotions when we are hurt because we're believers in Jesus Christ. We have to behave on the basis of who we are in Christ and not on the basis of who other people are and what they may have done or said to us. It's a big, big concept. <clears throat> Did you notice that of God, the wrath of God is in italics? What does that mean? Well, the scripture just says leave room for wrath. The words, the wrath of God, are supplied by translators in many of the more modern translations. And we have to think our way through what the actual text says, leave room for wrath. It could mean give place. This is a, for an article I found. I'll give you the reference if you want to uh, text me. I'll give it to you. Uh, there are four possibilities for that. Number one, give place to your enemy's wrath. That is, step aside and let it pass by you. And if there is to be wrath, let it be his rather than yours. Second theory, give place to your own wrath. That is, give it time to expend itself. Don't do anything hasty. Let the pressure in you dissipate. Number three, third possibility, give place to the wrath of the civil magistrate. That is, let the case come before the courts. That's what they're for. Or fourth, give place to God's wrath. This is the view of the translators of the New International Version and other modern translations who have added the word God's wrath to clarify what they believe the text is teaching. Well, theories two and three, if you were paying attention, really don't hold much water, and number one is not very viable either because the next phrase says the wrath of God. That pretty well contextualizes it for us. We are not to put ourselves, here's where we're going to land, we are not to put ourselves in the place of God. Meeting out punishment, it's not our job. Exacting the price that should be paid for sin, again, not our job. The statement, quote unquote, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, 
is from Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, but it is also quoted in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30. It is an essential truth to keep in mind, but it is difficult, especially when we are under attack. Don't you wish you had to, you didn't have to say you've ever been under attack? It's painful when people want to hurt you. But we've all been under attack at some point. It's difficult to keep ourselves in check when we're under attack. Times of attack are a profound test of faith and of whether or not we really do have an otherworldly perspective. That was a quotation again, by the way. If you want it, I'll send it to you. Now, <clears throat> back to NHC stuff. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We don't do it like they do it. We do it like he wants it done. And there's some <clears throat> debate about Arnold Toynbee and his great saying, but the way it landed with me is this. The wheels of God grind slowly, but they grind exceeding small. God was more merciful than us than people would have been. We have to give God a chance to be more merciful in dealing with others than we would be in our sinful disposition. <clears throat> so, when you are tempted to take revenge, when you are tempted to exact your vengeance from someone else, here's the bottom line. Behave on the basis of who you are in Christ and not on the basis of who other people are and what they may have done or said to you. It's what sets you apart as a believer in Jesus Christ, turning the other cheek and following in the footsteps of the one who said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Please remember, I didn't tell you it was easy, but it is right, and it does reflect the glory of God. Let me pray for us. Father, we love you. We uh, confess before you when we are attacked that it hurts very, very badly. Lord, we have a model in our Lord Jesus Christ of how to respond when that happens. Help us to walk in his footsteps and give glory to you and blessing to your people by how we handle it. <clears throat> Lord, we love you. Forgive us where we have fallen short. Help us not to fall short again in this area. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, may the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning, July the 8th at 6.05. God bless you.